Hey there, this is Niall, and I'm doing um, another Blender tutorial. This is um, how to animate in Blender. Um, you can apply this to any sort of animation. I'm just going to show the basics. I'm not going to do anything proper for now. But once you know the basics, you can take that to wherever you want to go. So I'm going to just start off with the basic cube, which I've gotten at the start of Blender. You will be needing a layout like this. You need this at the bottom here. This is your timeline where the frames go and this you'll be needing for later. So first of all what you want to do is you want to make sure you're at the start of the uh, timeline and you want to set the first keyframe. So first of all click the little red button, the little red circle thing call it what you want and um, that will start it so if you move it it automatically sets keyframes so I'll just undo that alright and um, this end here this is where the animation ends what frame number so leave that for now you can change that once you've finished animating just put it to the end of your animation and then start should always be one, unless you're for some strange reason starting somewhere else. But yeah, so once you've hit the record button, I guess you could call it automatic keyframe insertion for objects and bones. There you go. Um, you can either move it slightly like that, so it sets the keyframe, or you can do I, press the button I on your keyboard. And you'll get a menu here and you can insert keyframes for different things so you can do it for location rotation scaling and all the rest um, so I'm just gonna be moving the cube and that's location obviously so I'm just gonna set a location one but then if you were doing multiple you can then just do it again rotation and so on so then I'm going to move a number of frames uh, let's say 80 and just move it to here and then what it's going to do is if I play it it's just going to move over like that and then what you want to do is over this side you've got tons of different op options for your animation and um, one of the most important at this moment is frame rate now you can choose your frame rate yourself for it depends what sort of animation you're doing the higher the frame rate the more frames you have to put in but the smoother it is so for example 24 frames per second fps stands for frames per second in case you didn't know that as you can see it's quite slow and it's also quite jerky like it's not amazingly smooth but if I now change that to, say, 60, it's going to be, it's a lot faster, but it's also a lot smoother. See, it just sort of glides over nice and smooth. But of course, if you wanted it to um, go at the same speed as it does on 24 frames per second, you'd have to add in more frames because basically what it does is um, the frame rate the uh, frames per second is um, frames per second is how many frames so each one of these is a frame 14 15 frames 16 frames 17 frames and um, it's gonna play those and so at say 60 frames per second it's going to play 60 frames in a second so this would be a second this would be two seconds and so on and so if you have it at 24 frames per second it's only going to play 24 every second so yeah that would be a second there and then around here-ish would be two seconds so yeah if you have a higher frames per second your animation will end up probably being longer 
unless you want it really fast. Right, so yeah, it moves like that. And then, <clears throat> what you want to be careful of when animating, though, I do this quite a lot, is, hang on, I'm just going to adjust the cube for demonstration purposes. If you didn't know what I did there, that's control and R, but that doesn't really matter for this tutorial. Right. So say you had sort of, um, actually never mind that, right. Say you had two parts, so you have an object, you have a model that's got m more than one part, so this is two parts. If you were to move both of these and then only move one for a bit and then move. If you then, so I've put in two different bits there two different like keyframes if you then go to this one and you change this one it's gonna go all the way from back here because I haven't inserted a keyframe in between it's kinda hard to explain with these two cubes but um if you have um like a gun and you're doing a, an animation with a gun you're going to have the gun and you're probably going to have the hands and the arms and if you were to move be moving the gun for a while and not the arms when you then go to move the arms they're going to move they're going to start moving from all the way from the previous time you like adjusted or added a keyframe so just be careful of that and uh, that's sort of the, the basics really and if you want to delete keyframes I'm sure there's um, an easier way but at the moment this is the only way I know is you go into animation by this thing up here you can use this as well if you want it just adds this side bit here which is um, graph editor apparently oh well this bit is and then this bit's the um, dope sheet I believe and then this shows you your keyframes as little diamonds see that's cube which is this or the other one and um, that I deleted and these are the keyframes and you can you can move these if you want and as you can see it's moving it down here this gold bar the gold bars represent keyframes that you've put in or just where you've moved it they've been created and uh, you can just once you select them you just click the delete button and then OK so I'm just going to delete all the frames and then go back to default and yeah and it's on that but anyway so once you've made your animation so this is oh, I don't press that by accident right so once you've done your animation this is going to be my animation you if you want to render it as a movie format it's gonna render it through the eyes of the camera you have so that's sort of the main purpose of the camera so you wanna line up your camera make sure your camera sees what you want it to like what you wanna come out on the video so I'm gonna have to move that back a bit that'll do 
You can see the cube there. And I'll just make it blue, just so you can see it. And also, blue is quite a nice color. There we go. And um, if you're wondering what I'm doing now, I'm just pressing F12, um, which renders image. If yours isn't set to F12, you can just go up to render and render image. Or you can do it there. And then just go on this and click 3D view. And um, so... There you go, you can see this is through the eyes of the camera. And then you want to set the end to the same frame that, well, your animation ends on. So mine ends at uh, 83, that's the last keyframe that's been inserted. So I'm going to put the end as 83. And so it will just repeat now, like that. But it, it won't do that when you render it. And um, then you go to all these settings here, and you can do a bunch of stuff. Um, I can't actually pronounce that so properly, so I'm not going to bother. But yeah, you can change that, and you can probably find out what all these mean online. Motion blur, but that will adjust your render time. I mean, the, the more you sort of add and change, the longer your render time is going to be. A higher frames per second means there's going to be more frames, and that will take longer to render. Um, so you want to be careful of that. If you have quite a good computer, then rendering things probably won't be that much of a problem, but um, output, once you get to the end, the main things you want to change is you want to, well, you want to make sure you f frames per second is right, but you should have done that at the start. And um, you can adjust the resolution. Put that to 100%. Um, yeah. And then at the bottom here, output. Clicking this little thing um, allows you to choose where you want to save it to. So, um, Blender stuff, which has tons of rubbish in there. Um, and then you set the name in this bottom bar here. So, um, tutorial animation. And then click accept. And then this here is the file format. So what it's going to come out as. You can have it come out as images. But I wouldn't recommend that because, well, at the moment I have 83 frames. So if I were to leave it on PNG image... When I go to render it, it would um, make 83 separate pictures. It would turn all this into pictures, which isn't that great. Um, so, yeah, you want to change this to whatever you prefer, really. I usually do H.264, I think. And um, then you go up to the top and render animation and it will start doing this and it's rendering out each individual frame so that's the bar there and then when it gets to the end it's rendered one frame and then FRA is frame so on frame 5 frame 6 frame 7 see it, it takes sort of a bit of time to do each frame I mean it sort of depends on what sort of computer you've got but um, if you were to add tons of stuff to it, like motion blur and like all shading effects and stuff like that, it will definitely increase the time that it takes to render each individual frame. And if you up the frames per second, like I said earlier, you'd ha end up having a lot more frames. And so therefore that would take longer because you'd have to render all those extra frames. And um, yeah, so it's sort of a bit of a waiting task, this just sort of waiting for it to render and it shows you the image as it's rendered as well so I'll probably just speed this bit up yeah, and it doesn't really sort of tell you when it's done you just sort of have to um, see it's on frame 83 it just 
like sort of freezes. And then you just go back to 3D view and um, <laughs> ignore that at the bottom right. And here it is. I'm gonna just put it on repeat. This is the animation done. You can change the background and stuff. But yeah, that's my cube going along. Yeah, I, I, I did sort of um, rush this tutorial, but it's, it's generally just the basics. So what I've told you, you can use and just sort of apply it to whatever animations you want to do. And uh, I hope it helps. Um, if you want to see more, comment, I guess. Uh, sorry if I missed some things out. Like I said, I sort of rushed it. Just got back from school. So, yeah. And um, if you did like it, please like it. It helps a lot. It's quite nice. And um, if you have any questions or queries, do feel free to comment. I answer all of them, unless they're not actually questions, then sometimes I don't answer them. But I generally do answer all questions that come in and stuff. So yeah, and um, um, I'm thinking of doing um, a tutorial of, um, it'll be making the gun, it'll be, well, it'll be making a gun, um, it'll be texturing the gun, and it'll also be animating it, probably. Now, that'll, that'll be, like, a big tutorial, but it'll, it'll have to be split into, like, a bunch of different clips um, due to upload limits and such and such. Um, but, yeah, if that sounds good to you, um, do say in the comments. But um, that probably won't be for a while. But, yeah, I'll, I'll try my best. So, yeah, um, thanks and goodbye.